Breathlessness is uh, probably one of the most common reasons that people get referred to cardiology and respiratory. Um, and, and often they get dual referreds. So they may be seeing a cardiologist and a respiratory physician at the same time. From a heart perspective, the most common cause of breathlessness you want to exclude would be cardiomyopathy or weakening of the heart. The other big subgroup, particularly in the elderly patient, could be significant coronary disease. Some patients with significant coronary disease don't get chest pain, but they just get breathlessness. Um, another big subgroup of breathlessness obviously could be primary respiratory illness, uh, but normally by the time they come to us, this has been excluded. But the odd patient, I make the diagnosis of um, idiopathic um, fibrosis of the lungs. So we do make respiratory diagnoses sometimes. And there's always a small subgroup of breathlessness, which could be what we call deconditioning. So, and I've seen this in the COVID pandemic, particularly when people were strictly adhering to self-isolation, etc. Uh, a lot of people didn't get out and about, and I do think deconditioning must contribute to some people's breathlessness. That's a very interesting question. Um, and without a doubt, all breathlessness to a degree will have a degree of anxiety. It's probably the worst thing you can really have if you think about it, to feel that you're sitting or lying in your bed and you feel that you can't get enough air. So um, anxiety without a doubt is there. You can get primary anxiety that causes dyspnea. Um, normally in the younger patients, but all degrees of dyspnea will have a degree of anxiety. And that's the reason we come in, um, A, make a clear diagnosis of the mechanism of the breathlessness or reassure the patient that indeed there's no organic cause for the breathless and allow them to get on with their lives. And then in, in those subgroup of patients, you might find anxiety is a bigger component. Yes, the most important thing with uh, breathlessness is primary cardiac pathology. And the pivotal test we do is an echo. And the echo is done for two reasons. Firstly, it confirms that the heart's actually contracting well and relaxing well. So you can get systolic as well as diastolic dysfunction of the heart. And the other big thing is to exclude significant valvular disease, whether it be a stenotic lesion such as aortic stenosis, where the outflow is restricted from the heart, or a very leaky valve such as aortic regurge or mitral regurge, which puts a lot of pressure on the heart. So, yes, there can be very serious causes of breathlessness, and it can be excluded by a good clinical evaluation, good history, and an echocardiogram, and they can all be done within a few days seeing your cardiologist. I don't think there are any simple remedies for home breathlessness unless it was anxiety. My advice is if you are feeling breathless, it's always good to get that evalu evaluated by a clinician. You can start with your GP and GPs are very good at making very good and sensible assessments. And a lot of patients that come to me really have a tentative diagnosis by their, their primary physician, but seeing a cardiologist would be a good, good way forward. Obviously, if the patient primarily had cough, wheeze, et cetera, then naturally they would go more respiratory than to cardiovascular. But some patients, when they go into heart failure, they get fluid in the lung, their symptoms can really be identical to that of, a, of someone with a, a respiratory component. So breathlessness is, is, is difficult to tease out, but we've got very simple and robust tests to sort that out. If you at home and you just feel that you can't get enough air into your lungs, and the best way is patients to feel that they're potentially suffocating or drowning, that is a medical emergency and you can't wait to for an outpatient appointment. And I would suggest they call their local ambulance services. So never take breathlessness. Um, um, you always need to take it very seriously. Some patients, actually, when they have a heart attack, don't get any chest pain. They just get acutely and severely breathless. And that can be their main symptom. Um, so any acute onset breathlessness is always a worry. So the, another thing is if you've been gradually getting breathless over a couple of years, it's less likely to be acutely serious. But if you, the day before, were fit and well, then you wake up the next day and you can't breathe, that suggests something acute and severe has occurred. 
and that requires urgent input from a clinician.